Hello, my name is Sheila Guillotin and this is The Simsbury Woman. Today we're going to discuss the arts, specifically theater or performance arts, and the importance of these creative arts to our society. Scientists who study the evolution of human culture have postulated that the development um, of a creative culture is important in human development and shapes the kind of society that a culture exhibits. A society that places little importance on creativity is likely to be a society that is repressed and even tyrannical. Free thought and the free expression of thought are forbidden. Most free societies have some form of performance art. It may be dance, music, theater, or a combination of all three. The theater presents an opportunity to confront, in a controlled environment, many of the problems which society is facing. The theater teaches us not only about ourselves, but helps us to understand other cultures. We become less focused on our problems when we see a play or a performance that takes us into another's culture, and we begin to understand that many issues are common to all cultures. The theater also provides us an easy and enjoyable way to learn history. Ignorance of history causes a society to repeat its mistakes. Today, with less funding for the arts on the national level, professional regional theater companies have become even more important. My guest today is Tracy Flader, executive director and co-founder of Playhouse Theater Group, a nonprofit professional theater company. In 2009, Tracy, a Simsbury resident of 20 plus years, saw a need and an opportunity. Welcome, Tracy, and thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, would you give us, our viewers, just a little background on your um, association with the theater, how you came to this? I don't think that was where you started. Absolutely not. It was quite unexpected, actually. Um, we, I had worked previously for the Hart School and um, brought the satellite location for the Hart School here to Simsbury in Simsmore Square. And the developer I worked with, um, at one point or another, I sort of complained a little bit about the lack of performance space, especially for dance companies, and um, made him well aware of the fact that if he ever stumbled upon an opportunity to, to let me know um, to either build or find theater space. And many years later, he remembered I said that, came to me, and he had an opportunity, not in West Hartford, elsewhere in Connecticut, um, in which we were seriously looking at building theater space. So as as the de as that developed, I brought in my business, my now business partner, Darlene Zoller, um, because she is a dancer and a choreographer and has a dance company, and I really wanted her input into this potential new theater space. And she dragged along our third partner, who has become our third partner, Sean Harris, who's an actor, director, theater educator. And the three of us were making a three-year plan to bring this theater space to uh, a reality. And in the process, we wanted to produce some work um, for investors. So we went to the former Park Road Playhouse on Park Road and um, had a meeting about just renting the space for two separate weeks over, over the summer months. And they were very open to that. And um, we never really got our lease or our agreement to make that happen. And we started hearing rumors in the community that that theater space was going through a bankruptcy and that it wasn't gonna exist anymore. So we didn't know what to do because the first show we were going to put in there was a dance show that was being choreographed to the space, which is a three quarter mm. thrust, a very intimate three quarter thrust. So we thought, do we reach out to the landlord? What do we do? And ironically, the landlord came to us and said, um, it is true, the rumors you're hearing, the, the community theater that is in there now is being evicted, and, uh, but we're still very, I'm still very interested in renting to you for that week. That's all we cared about. We didn't care, we were just grateful, certainly concerned because we all loved that space mm -hmm. for reasons I'm sure we'll talk about over mm -hmm. the next half an hour, but... Um, you know, at that moment, we just wanted to produce our work and um, and we were able to do that. So we met with the landlord and um, asked her a number of questions about um, the support she would be offering when we were in there. And she admittedly um, expressed concern that she didn't know a lot about theater mm -hmm. and um, that she was hoping to rent 
just it as much as possible, but maybe we could consult with her because she was a little lost. So we agreed to have a conversation about that at another time. And then we got called to another meeting in which um, my landlord was there, but the president of the Park Road Association, um, several people from the town of West Hartford, from the Chamber of Commerce. And um, essentially, they were incredibly concerned because at the time, uh, in 2009, the economy was not in good shape. Mm -hmm. There was a, a key business on the street, Bazillions, which was a shoe oh, store yeah. for years that. and years and years, 40 something years, um, where they had retired and they had closed their business mm -hmm. and they were trying to sell the building and it, you know, no property was moving at that time. And so it was boarded up and, and the fear was now there'd be this theater that would end up um, boarded up on the street. And, and they were really concerned for the street and for the town. So essentially they convinced us to take over this space and our three-year plan turned into a two-month plan. Okay. We incorporated one month later and moved in one month after that and uh, became Playhouse Theater Group and started producing work almost immediately with the show that we had planned to do in June anyway. But then uh, we did a couple of other things over the summer and kicked off our first season in September of 2009. Hmm. So it was sort of by accident. Um, we didn't have any funding in place. We didn't wow. have our nonprofit status. It took us another 14 months after that to get our nonprofit sure. status. Um, but it was, it was a, it's been a lot of work yeah, <laughs> and, sure. and now we're seven, you know, seven and a half years old. So that's, in, that's in our awesome. eighth season, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, you corrected me once and I think our viewers probably need to understand there is a significant difference between community theater and regional professional theater. Absolutely. Would you sure? Give us a um, first, I will make, I mean, make no mistake, both are equally important um, within our community and without, I mean, the arts need both. Um, you know, community theater is more, um, the doors are open for anyone to be involved, whether it's on stage or behind this, you know, backstage. Um, it's usually, uh, you know, a group of people local in the community that get together. Um, and most often it's all volunteer uh, to produce work um, you know that's open to the public and, and of course community theater needs funding as well there's operating fees such as you know maintaining the theater space and and um, anything that they have to any of the tangibles costumes sets that sort of thing um, in, in a regional professional theater um, everybody is paid uh, all of our actors are paid um, the the work is directed by professionals, designed by professionals in the industry, um, and it's all by audition. And really, the person that gets the role is the person that warrants the role, whether they're coming in from New York City mm -hmm. or, um, you know, in some ch cases, they are local. Um, and for our situation, we're a little unique because we do have a slight hybrid, which we weren't sure would be our model going, f you know, forever, mm -hmm. but we've um, critic and the community have been grown to embrace it. So, uh, so I don't know if we'll ever change. But we do audition um, locally, and you know, with people who are not necessarily professional equity actors. Mm -hmm. And if they warrant the role, I mean, they're hired. So mm -hmm. we're able to sort of mix a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, so at any moment there could be, you know, a, a Broadway actor, along with a Drama Desk Award-winning director maybe some actors, you know, aspiring to get their equity card any moment, um, but a student from the Hart School and maybe an accountant <laughs> down the street. Wow, um, that's awesome. But but they're only getting the job if um, if they warrant it through audition mm -hmm. and um, they are then paid like any other professional working in the industry. Oh, that's interesting. You know, so, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, now, I know that the Playhouse has won some fairly prestigious awards, but let me just clarify. I know from watching the Tonys that regional theaters, are, there's usually a regional theater that's selected um, every year to get some kind We're of award. We're not quite there yet. Okay, I was just going to say, are you <laughs> but, into that? No, but we would um, certainly aspire to be it there. And, okay. um, you know, the, the way that you are considered for awards like that is certainly, first of all, people knowing you work. And um, one of the biggest challenges we had in, in moving into a space that was originally mm -hmm. a, a community theater, and in community theater, you're not reviewed by critics necessarily, um, and you're not put in the same category as other regional mm -hmm. theaters. And for us, such as Hartford Stage, um, Theater Works, Iverton, Goodspeed, Opera House, those are our colleagues. Okay. Um, and so the first step is really being recognized you know, by, by the local critics 
and by the other theaters. And it, it's taken us a long time. But you have gotten awards. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Our first challenge was just getting people to come and uh, review our work, mm -hmm. you know, having critics come in and review our work. So um, over the first couple of years, um, Little by little, we would get more people coming. And we remember the first time we got our Hartford Current review. Um, took us several years to get our first New York Times review. And, um, you know, that sort of validates the credibility of your work, mm -hmm. um, where your colleagues start to take you seriously and other critics, you know, start to come and see your work. Um, over the first uh, seven years that we've been there, you know, we've certainly won in numerous uh, reader polls like the... Um, you know, the former Hartford Advocate Best, you know, Best Theater in Connecticut or the um, Hartford Magazine Best Theater in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Three times we've been named Best Professional Theater in Connecticut by BroadwayWorld.com. Oh, nice. Um, we have received uh, the Noah Webster Award, which is uh, an award given in West Hartford um, for the impact that you make in the community. Um, you know, so there's been a lot of awards such as that. Mm -hmm. We've uh, In our sixth season, we were invited... Um, again, a challenge to be recognized as a professional theater in Connecticut. Um, it took us, I think, into our fifth or sixth season before we were invited into the Connecticut Critics Circle. And so for the past two years, we've received five or six nominations, taking home a nomination for, I mean, an award for um, the Best Ensemble in a Musical for our production of the 25th Annual Putnam Spelling Bee. Mm. But, um, you know, it's nice to be nominated along with sure. Anastasia at Hartford Stage or um, something happening at Goodspeed or Theater right. Works, you know. And, so and when they say, oh, it's fine, it's wonderful just to be nominated, that's it's actually true. true. So, I mean, first when we were even just allowed to join the Connecticut Critics Circle and be considered a professional theater amongst our peers, which mm -hmm. are, you know, 50 some odd year old theaters that are winning Tony Awards in New York sure. right now. Um, you know, that was special in itself. And when our first nominations came out and we were alongside um, some pretty credible actors, actresses, directors, yeah. you know, productions. No, it's very, very true. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So um, I looked on your website and you have a very specific mission statement. I'd kind of like to go through a couple of the points sure. of your mission mm -hmm. statement, uh, because I think it gives people an idea of what you're actually um, your goals really are. And I think the first of your mission statements is to provide quality entertainment at affordable cost to as broad an audience as possible. Um, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, well, we'll just move on to the next one. Then. We're, you know, we're in a really uh, unique situation, which I don't think you'll, you'll hear of in most uh, professional theaters. As We have two artistic directors. We have co-artistic directors. Okay. And um, it's a really beautiful balance. As I mentioned earlier, one is very focused in, in theater and the other more focused in dance mm. um, and choreography. Okay. And, um, you know, they both they both have um, different opinions of what, what they really mm -hmm. like to see on stage. And I think for us, it creates a beautiful balance. Mm -hmm. And we decided early on, we really, two things, um, prior to us coming in the door, that theater had maybe four or five productions a year and then was dark every other time. Mm. So we knew right away we didn't really want to be dark if we didn't have to be dark. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to keep the theater open and vibrant um, all the time so that people would think what is happening at the Playhouse and, and most often mm -hmm. there would be something going on. So that was the first thing we thought of and the second thing we decided was that we didn't really want to pigeonhole ourselves into one particular kind of work. Like they only do avant-garde edgy pieces of theater. Okay. Um, um, we felt throughout the course of a year, we could really try to diversify our offerings. So there was something for everyone. So our main stage season, which is our plays mm -hmm. and musicals in which you can buy a subscription. Mm -hmm. And we have seven main stage productions um, on any given year. There's usually two musicals, two dramas, two comedies and, uh, you know, a dance performance. Okay. Um, and and they are um, maybe true and tried traditional works or newer, lesser known edgier pieces, but really um, a combination of everything. And one of the things that we were initially worried about is that would somebody subscribe to something like mm -hmm. that if there wasn't something, you know, um, if they didn't like every single show sure. in the season, would that scare them away? And our hope was that in time, 
our, our subscribers would learn to trust us mm. so that if we put something on stage, they would know that um, they, they would be a little bit more open to taking a chance and seeing something they would normally not go in and buy tickets for. Okay. And recently, um, we had a subscriber appreciation event, which we try to do once a year. And uh, it's a chance for us to thank our subscribers, but also to have some candid conversations. Mm -hmm. And there was some discussion about the diversity in our, in our main stage season. And we talked about, you know, the hopes that, you know, what, we were always hoping that one day our subscribers would just trust us and come and yeah. see work. And, and a couple of subscribers stopped me in the middle of my, my conversation and they <laughs> said, we trust you, you know, and, and we're seeing that more and more that um, people are, you know, each year we grow, our subscription base grows and there right. are definitely shows that people haven't heard of mm -hmm. and that we have to educate them a little bit about beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, but more and more people are trusting us. So we, we like that balance. We were criticized in the beginning by a, by a couple of other um, theaters about, you know, that we didn't have an identity. We didn't know who we were. And I think mm. um, in seven years, people now say, well, that is their identity. They do a little bit of everything. And we've actually seen a couple of other places start to emulate that model a little bit as well. Oh, that's great. So it's interesting, you know, and we were very focused in staying steadfast to our vision and not listen to any of mm -hmm. the naysayers that it wouldn't work. Um, you know, and what's also great is if you're not a subscriber and you really don't like plays, but mm -hmm. you love musicals, then you still get to come and see us at some point during the year and vice versa. Sure. Yeah. So, of course, you know, in, in the second part, outside of our main stage, mm -hmm. um, you know, we try to, we, we have a theater for young audience series. We have comedy. We have improv. We have music. So there's options for everyone. Yeah. I want to get to much. all of that. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. As we go down. But mm -hmm. um I noticed your performance schedule, which, and I confess, I honestly had not heard of the Playhouse on You are not alone. Um, I also have, and, and we probably, this is as good a place as any to discuss it. I have what is probably not uncommon, uh, but I have a, a, I lived in New York for years, mm -hmm. and I have a New York bias. Um, for some reason, having grown up in Cleveland, and lived with the Cleveland Orchestra my whole life. I don't have the bias about symphonies. If you asked me to name a symphony, you know, I could name 10. But when I think of theater or dance, mm -hmm. I instantly go to New York. I don't even think uh, locally. Now, that's got to be an education process that you need to address. And how do you go about you know, breaking down the bias of people like me who would love to go. I mean, we did. We have to get you go. there. Well, you got me there. Right. You, and you to did, change your mind. Wonderful. Will you come back? Absolutely. See? We will subscribe. <laughs> right. I mean, no question about it. In fact, I want to talk about a couple of the shows sure. that are upcoming. But yes, it was an absolutely, I'm sitting there going, I can't believe this is here and I never knew about it. And that is Almost like 99% of the time, the first time someone comes to our space, they leave saying that exact same yeah. thing. And, um, you know, our first hurdle when we moved into the space was letting people know that we were there and that we were different from the theater that was there before, that mm -hmm. we, were, we were producing professional work. And um, it doesn't matter how many advertising mech tricks we have tried to get that word out. It really takes getting someone into the space. And for multiple reasons, um, you know, the quality of our work, but the intimacy of our space. Yeah, I'd it, like you to talk about that because sure. you had warned me ahead of time because we had had a little chat before we went mm -hmm. and then you had so graciously invited us to a performance and we did go to see Unnecessary Farce. And but the theater is quite different from anything in New York. It's extremely intimate. Explain why and, and what it looks like. We're going to put up a, 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 sure. a, a um, picture of the seating chart, but it is quite different. And, and maybe a little bit more familiar to um, people who go to like off-Broadway or off-Broadway yeah. productions yes. because of the size and the exactly. uniqueness of the space. Um, the space actually was once a garage oh. that housed 44 um, milk delivery trucks for A.C. <laughs> Peterson Farms. Okay. So A.C. Peterson Farms had their farm in Bloomfield and their ice cream manufacturing plant in West Hartford okay. and their restaurant and their milk delivery service all there. So the restaurant next door to us, A.C. Peterson's, is a 
100 years old. Right. Um, the, that I had been to. Yeah. <laughs> See, isn't it crazy? Never knew there was a theater next exactly. door, right? Yep. It happens all the time. And even when people like drive by it and drive by it and they're like, I've always seen it. They're not expecting when they step into those front doors that, that there could even be a performance exactly. space. It looks very, very small. And it is very small, but of course we still seat 163 people. Okay. And um, it's almost like a theater in the round. Mm -hmm. It's considered a three quarter thrust. Okay. So there are, they're seating on three sides of the mm -hmm. stage. Um, and you said four deep. And four rows deep. Yep. So you're never further right. than four rows back from the stage. The chairs were extremely comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I've recently on Broadway, some of them have become considerably less comfortable. And spacious. And, and there's spacious. not really a really height, height problem. Yeah. Yeah, no, there, there wasn't. Nice, I was, I was the amazed. Grade. Yeah. The grade um, level it is. was very easy to see. And you could see that, you know, everyone could see, you know. There's not a bad seat in the house. Right. And, um, you know, what happens is the intimacy makes you much more accountable as an audience member. So you can't, I mean, and the same for the actors mm -hmm. is true where they can't phone in a performance because okay. you're going to call them out. Right. They can't turn to the back wall and, you know, turn off their character because somebody's going to be looking at them. So they are more held more accountable to the audience and the audience, you're more immersed in the work mm -hmm. versus, you know, setting back and, and viewing it. There's really no fourth wall, you know, you're really, right. um, and, and it's interesting because people will come out and, you know, we did a, a, uh, highly praised um, production of Cabaret. And people... I want to hear about how you do musicals. Oh, yeah. That's... We're very clever with musicals. But people come out, you know, Cabaret, Chicago, mm -hmm. others, and, and they'll tell us, I saw this in New York, I saw, it in Bra I saw it in London, and your production was better. And of course, it may not have been better, but they're seeing it and feeling it very, very differently than sitting in the 30th row sure. of a proscenium, yeah. you know, major house in, in the city. Um, and it allows them to really appreciate the work in a very different way. Yeah. So it makes it a special experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have... Now, how do you handle a musical? It's... it's. Uh, we, I mean, do you have record... You don't have a pit, no, obviously. No. We always have live music. Oh, you do? We always have live music. So, I mean, if you have the opportunity to sort of scroll through some of our mm -hmm. uh, photo albums on our website... I have. In fact, um, we'll put some of the pictures up. Yeah, so people you'll can see get them. a good chance. You know, there have been productions we did the last five years where the orchestra was actually in the center of the stage, and the, there's only a two-person show. Okay, and they sort of, um, you know, worked worked around it, and it was sort of incorporated into all of the blocking by the director that okay. that the orchestra would be there. Um, you know, sometimes uh, it's you know the sets are designed in a way so that there's a place to house the band, mm. the the pit. And sometimes, almost always, you can see them on a rare occasion, like a chorus line where we really needed the dance mm -hmm. space. Um, they were behind the set in the okay. green room. Um, we we don't like when we when yeah. we hide our musicians. Okay. Um, oh, but they hide them on Broadway. All the I time, know so. sometimes on the fourth floor, yeah. fourth floor is up. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and if we have to do it, we do it. Yeah. And you know sometimes they're recessed. Sometimes they're um, you know again we did uh, um, Chicago several years back where we had sort of platforms and mm -hmm. they were placed. You know okay. the, the band was on. We're very creative. Okay. Trust us, we can. We, we find a way to do it. And we know our limits. You know, okay. we're certainly not going to do Showboat and, you know, with, that, with right. the production value. But um, but there's a lot of musicals that have worked beautifully. Yeah. Um, I mean, I noticed that you're doing things like Moon for the Misbegotten and Cabaret. And those in an intimate theater, I mean, those are rough dramas. Mm -hmm. And I have to believe that your audience experience is going to be much more um, intense yeah. being that close to the actors. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is one production I do want to ask you about, and that is because we absolutely intend to go, and that's the Shakespeare. Oh, um, yes. And I understand it's a revival because it seems to have been done before, but uh, according to your um, website, it features all 37 of Shakespeare's plays performed in 97 minutes by three actors. So how do you do that? <laughs> ironically, we've done it before. Right. Which, and and, and if, if we could go back and do our first season all over again, we would because we produced such beautiful work that year. And since we were so new, nobody knew to come and see it. And we feel that years later, now that we have such a following, mm -hmm. 
um, you know, somehow, some way to get some of that that earlier work seen is really important to us. So the significance for the complete works of William Shakespeare abridged is that was our very first show that ever sold out. Really? And we always, always said someday we'd love to do it again. We'd love to do it again where we can, um, you know, we've gotten smarter. Back then, I think we ran the show for two weeks okay. and we didn't allow room to extend the show. Okay. So there were a lot of people who heard about it, but then couldn't come and see it. Okay. And, um, you know, we weren't really ready to do it again right away, okay. but we just decided, you know, it's been enough years and we have always wanted to bring it back. And so we're bringing it back in the summer where we can run it for, you know, five okay. or six weeks, which will give, you know, audiences, yeah. um, the opportunity it's, it's, it's going off our model a little bit. It's taking us off the track a little yeah. bit because normally we save our big musicals for summer. Okay. But, um, the show is, is, um, I will say that last time we did it during intermission, people were still crying with laughter, calling their friends <laughs> at intermission <laughs> saying really? this show is so fun. You have to come back. You have to come and see it. And so we're really excited to bring it back with the opportunity to, to grow. Yeah, I, I can't wait. Yeah. I mean, um, it's very you know, fun. I have an English degree and um, my husband and I are going back rereading the, the histories because we know the comedies and the tragedies pretty well. But I'm thinking, oh, you know, I don't think I'm really that good on the histories. Before we finish, sure. Um, talk a little bit about the education component and the dance component. Okay. Um, quickly, Darlene Zoller, who is our co artistic director, um, has a, uh, a dance company called Stop Time Dance Theater that she actually founded. Um, about five years before we moved into the theater. So um, that, but they had performed their very first production in the space we are in now, but okay. long before it was Playhouse on Park and um, was one of the first things, it was the very first thing we put on stage when we actually took over the space. Okay. So we are the only regional theater company with a dance company in residence, um, which we're very proud of. And they do an original work once a year, which um, in the first couple of years was independent of our main stage season. And then one year we decided to test it out and put it in the main stage season and um, it's become one of the most popular things we do each year so very proud of that and uh, because of that we have had other opportunities uh, a couple of years ago we did a series called tap and jazz which was jazz musicians jazz vocalists with tap dancers um, we have a burlesque show mama d's which comes back um, uh, over the course of every couple of years with you know right now we're doing mama d's christmas stocking but we've done mama d's outrageous romp and mama d's halloween outrageous romp um, which which is dance and music and comedy, sort of like a, a, a burlesque slash variety okay. show. So there's there's a lot of dance incorporated in what we do. And of course, in our musicals, um, we're very lucky <clears throat> to have Darlene, who does choreograph um, some of our shows, which okay. she knows that space like the back of her hand and is very creative in her okay. use. Um, education from the moment we walked through the door. Um, we knew education would be important to us. And it was really the community that made it happen far sooner than we ever expected we would start teaching. But we have um, a vast array of classes, uh, theater classes for um, students in grades K through eight. We have high school programs. We have programs for adults. Um, this coming winter, we have an impro improvisation class, um, an intermediate improvisation class for adults. We do a lot of master classes with actors that are in, you know, when they're in from the mm -hmm. city working on a show, um, we're able to to, um, you know, take advantage of their skill and their talent and allow them to do a one night, two hour master class, um, or, you know, visit some of our programming that's already happening. Wow. Um, come summertime, we have, you know, uh, summer programs that are, you know, half day, couple of weeks long or full day programs for more intensive programs. Um, and we'll be expanding upon those. Um, one of the challenges for us is space. Okay. Um, so we are looking to have more appropriate teaching space so we can grow. Okay. But we also um, do a lot in the schools. So okay. we have programs that go into the schools and we also have schools come to us. So this year alone, we have five or 6,000 um, elementary students that will come and see our young audience performances. Um, and we include a, a study guide for the teacher, a classroom visit by one of our professionals, and then they come and take a field trip and see the work on stage and uh, meet and greet with the cast. And if it's something in our main stage, mm. we have high schoolers doing the same exact thing. So last year we had The Chosen mm. and Tuesdays with 
with Maury, and they get to have a talk back with the cast. So Great. really important to us, and we're doing a lot. That's awesome. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. And then Funny I how that happens. Three more pages of questions. Um, I hope our viewers have enjoyed this look behind the scenes of a professional company and recognize the importance of supporting both the performance as well as the educational component. Um, there are so many ways the theater enriches us and provides a valuable outlet for self-expression and an opportunity to educate and inform an audience. Well, absolutely. Tracy, thank you so much. Thank this you. This has been absolutely a, a joy. Appreciate being here. And thanks to all our viewers for watching. <laughs>